<laughs> Kia ora tata, everyone. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here today. My, uh, my story uh, pales into insignificance of it, really, alongside the, the personal journeys of the two people that we've just heard from this evening. But um, the story I want to talk about is the enormous value of collaboration in the research field. And I should start by saying that, uh, that I am not a scientist. But over the last 30 years or so, I have had the, the pleasure and the privilege to work with a number of Crown Research Institutes and universities and scientists. And, um, and for most of that time, the model on which they were funded was uh, a contestable process, a contestable funding process which uh, had its genesis in the, in the days of Rogenomics. And the, and the principle of that is that through contestability, um, you, you drive excellence. Well, it has to be said that the, um, the contestable model hasn't necessarily served uh, the, public, the public science uh, sector in New Zealand particularly well. And I have um, had to observe the, um, the enormous amount of uh, lost productivity and wastage as um, competing universities and CRIs were chasing a limited amount of funds, observing uh, top talent leave New Zealand, and, um, and about a 30% ratio of productivity as a, uh, for the money invested. So um, I, I have a, a bit of a jaundiced view about, about, about that model. And some five years ago, uh, I had the opportunity to, to look at something different. And, uh, and we did it in, in the area of climate change research. Now, just a couple of, a couple of comments on, on climate change and, and what I think our uh, individual responsibilities are to future generations about climate change. Firstly, as, as we all know, it's a story about emissions and um, the obligation on all of us to, uh, to reduce the emissions of uh, CO2 equivalents um, from the consumption of, of fossil fuels, and in particular, in New Zealand's case, the massive dilemma of agricultural emissions. But as we all know, <coughs> as we all know New Zealand's um, got a, a relatively small, um, is, a, is a relatively small contributor to the global emission budget. Um, we should certainly do what we can, and we should do more in the area of agricultural um, emission science. But the second obligation is, for me, um, equally important, and that is the need for us to prepare for the inevitability of temperature increase and the impacts and implications of climate change. We are hopelessly unprepared for this, and as the Paris Accord indicated, we have a target now of two degrees uh, increase in temperature, and we really don't have a lot of, uh, of knowledge of how we are going to prepare for this. And in this area, New Zealand has a massive potential contribution to make. And the reason for that is Antarctica. Antarctica holds 80% of the world's fresh water. It drives all the globe's ocean systems, and it holds the key to what is going to happen on the future of the planet. So um, when you look at New Zealand's presence in Antarctica and the Ross Sea region, um, this is the part of the continent that uh, stretches closest to the South Pole. Um, it's, uh, it sits where the massive Ross ice shelf um, floats on the, on the ocean. This is a, a single slab of ice um, bigger than France and uh, a couple of kilometres thick. Uh, and, and for us, uh, the reputation of our scientists that we have built up over the years uh, and the uh, proximity and value of Christchurch as a launching base for scientific expeditions to the ice, New Zealand has a pivotal role in the way in which um, we approach climate change science now and in the future. Because the reality is we know very little about what is happening down there. Um, the, the environment there is hostile. The, the difficulty of, of research is, is, is eye-wateringly expensive. And, um, and, 
and we, we know very little about, um, about what is happening, particularly under the ice, um, where warming sea temperatures are probably rotting uh, ice and, uh, and leading to its ultimate decay. But in spite of all that, the world scientists want to work with us for the reasons that I, uh, that, I, that I mentioned earlier about the value of New Zealand's unique special place on the continent. Scientists from the United States, from Italy, from uh, South Korea, from Australia, um, from China, from Russia, are all interested in working with the Kiwis. So when we had the opportunity to create a new research institute um, with Antarctica New Zealand about uh, five years ago, we looked at a public-private model where we would match um, our unique access to Antarctica, which was provided by the New Zealand government through Antarctica New Zealand, with private funding, um, because there would never be enough government funding for Antarctic uh, research from New Zealand alone. And this led us to go out into the world and work with the international philanthropic community and find new sources of money for, um, for, 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 this, for this cause. And it didn't take long um, for us to, to, to find organizations, and, and I particularly want to mention the Julian Robinson's Aotearoa Fund that, uh, that John Hood manages for, um, for Julian as an anchor sponsor for the new uh, Antarctic Research Institute. But the key to us doing this was to, instead of a contestability process, uh, we, would, we, we, we um, instilled in the Institute the principles of collaboration. So um, the, 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 the basis of all our research funding was around bringing teams of international scientists together to confront difficult um, difficult problems and, uh, and solutions around climate change. The most, I guess, successful of, this, uh, of these has been the, the Ross Shelf um, ice um, project where, where we have um, set up a series of uh, remote locations to understand what is happening under the ice. Um, this means drilling through a, a couple of kilometers of, of um, of, of ice shelf and uh, setting remote sensors in the ocean below to try and understand uh, w w what is happening down there. Um, and, and this is going to be of enormous value uh, when we uh, need to provide more predictability around the, um, the, the, the ocean systems and the, the implications of sea level rise, changing uh, weather patterns, particularly for New Zealand with its uh, massive coastline and uh, so much coastal um, infrastructure that we should be planning for now and, um, and predicting better weather patterns as they, as they impact our, um, our, our, primary, our primary industries. So the Research Institute, I think, has been, has been very successful in driving these collaborative, um, these collaborative teams, bringing together um, international um, scientists, um, g gathering them in New Zealand and, um, and uh, sending them to Antarctica, to Scott Base normally, the New Zealand um, research station on Ross Island um, out, of, out of Christchurch. And there are a couple of uh, really sort of gratifying things that have, that have emerged from, from this. And the first is that this model of collaboration has been, um, to a large extent, copied when the uh, national science challenges were launched by the New Zealand government about three or four years ago. The national science challenges have uh, identified 11 key questions that the country needs to answer um, and to do this through a, a collaborative process of multi-disciplined um, uh, scientists. And uh, I'm fortunate to be involved in three of them, the New Zealand Biological Heritage that, that is principally interested in the protection of New Zealand biodiversity and, and biosecurity. The second is Deep South, which is in itself a climate change, um, uh, a climate change challenge. Um, which sets uh, out to create a new Earth system model to, to um, assist in the predict uh, uh, to better our predictability 
of, um, of, of changes in the Southern Ocean and help us prepare for better infrastructural spending and uh, primary industry investment in the future. And the third challenge is, a, um, is the one that I chair called Sustainable, uh, sustainable Seas, which is uh, the question which, which it has been set to answer is to develop new tools so that we can um, extract the resources of the ocean on a more sustainable basis. And this is not only the fishing sector, which is an aquaculture, which is obviously uh, often thought of as the principal economic driver from the ocean, but also oil and gas and, 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 uh, and subsea mining and tourism and, and, um, and, uh, and the other aspects of, of the sea. So um, the, the, this all came home to me, I guess, most graphically the other day when I had a conference for the Sustainable Seas Science um, team where they had gathered with, with all the universities in New Zealand and the, and the Crown Research Institutes hosted by NIWA and, um, and, a, and a scientist who had been in the, in the public science uh, system for, for 30 or 40 years um, was giving his presentation and he, he remarked that he had never experienced um, such a, uh, an open collaborative uh, process as he had working within this challenge. And the, 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 the nugget for me in this was when he said that for 20 or 30 years, the system had been uh, driving us to withhold our data, to, to not share data with other um, institutions. Um, and this process has, uh, has, has completely reversed that and enabled us to, uh, to share data. And the data set that they had, um, that, that had resulted from the sharing of this had, be had suddenly become of, of global significance because the individual silos of it had no interest at all globally, but uh, collectively on the New Zealand EEZ that had suddenly become of immense uh, global interest. And it just shows you, I think, the, the, the danger of, um, of, of too much contestability and the resulting sort of siloed thinking that uh, results from that and the enormous value of um, teams working together, scientists collaborating and, um, and, sharing, and sharing their knowledge. Finally, I guess the, the, the other very rewarding sort of aspect of this for me was that it's with the model of, um, of a public-private partnership was used um, for my other great passion, which was, is around the protection of our indigenous biodiversity from predation by, um, uh, by mammalian predators. <clears throat> and Predator Free New Zealand, or Predator Free 2050, which was established a, um, a few months ago, is, does precisely that. It, it's a fund that... Um, uh, that, that, that matches uh, the government's investment, the DOC's investment with philanthropic investment and, uh, and local government investment. And just a word on, on predator-free um, 2050, folks. Um, I am, a lot of people think that this is a, a extremely ambitious concept and, uh, and, and really is, sets us up to, um, uh, to, to, to for, for, for non-achievement, but I have a very different view on it because I think that New Zealanders will um, succeed with this because the um, alternative is almost unimaginable. The reality is that um, the number of native birds that are being destroyed by predators in New Zealand at the moment is at the rate of 26 million birds every year. That's what DOC estimates. 26 million native birds are destroyed by rats and stoats and feral cats and possums every year. Our kiwi, the symbol of New Zealand, will be extinct in 50 years' time. There is no doubt about that. The population is declining at minus 2% per annum at the moment, and, um, and it will be extinct uh, in the lifetime of your children and grandchildren. That is not that is not something that um, any of us can, can really tolerate or accept. And um, the notion of predator-free 2050 and bringing together these teams, these armies of volunteers, the, 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 the full forces of, 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 of DOC, 
and the value of science to come up with some solutions, maybe genetic um, editing solutions that will um, push back on this invasion of predators is worth uh, every possible investment of effort that all of us uh, can make, and I commend you all to, uh, to, to get behind it. Um, that is, there, is so, there is much at stake, and perhaps most important, um, our, our national identity and the things that make New Zealand special uh, in the rest of the world. Folks, thank you very much indeed. It's been a pleasure talking to you.